The Ben Heck Show is brought to you by Element 14, the electronic design community and online store built for engineers and hobbyists alike. Join now and browse the store at element14.com. Benjamin J. Heckendorf. Every week he takes on new projects, shares tips and tricks, and answers your viewer questions on The Ben Heck Show. Hello and welcome back to The Ben Heck Show. We get quite a few questions about reusing old LCDs from laptops, portable DVD players, and other devices. So in today's episode, we're going to take a cheap LCD device and see just what it takes to reuse that screen and something else other than the device it came with. The idea here is to illustrate just how difficult this can be and why you should consider the time involved before trying to use one yourself. But first, the news. Hey everybody, Allison here with today's Ben News. I'm very excited to announce that it is our 100th episode. That's right, 100 episodes. Thanks for being with us along the way. Ben hasn't quite made it in for the day, so I thought I would surprise him with some cupcakes and whatnot. He should be arriving any minute, so I better get these lit. Oh no, here he comes. Oh, hey, Ben. Candles? What's all this for? This is how many episodes we've done. Four? I think we've done more than four episodes. Oh, it's not in binary. Oh! Yeah. A hundred episodes! That's right, happy 100th episode. We've done 100 episodes? That's right. Oh my gosh. Everything from robot luggage to quadcopters to... That Nintendo thing with the slot? Yeah, I remember that. It's been a long journey. It has indeed, but that's why we get cupcakes But throughout now. the journey, I have not stopped believing. Good one. And because cupcakes are all well and good, but for after we're done filming today, I thought, you know, why not celebrate with your favorite beer? Oh, Spotted Cow, worth filming 100 episodes for. This was not sponsored or endorsed by Nuclearist Brewing Company. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, I guess you should blow out your candles and make a wish. Gosh, what do I wish for? I wish that someone on Kickstarter would create a photolithographic PCB etching system for $3,000 or less. That's very specific, and I hope that your wish comes true. Me too, because I would totally kickstart that. I bought these LCDs at Halted Electronic Supply in Sunnyvale. They were $5 each, and all they really are supposed to do is display images off an SD card. You know, very cheap picture frames. So this would be an ideal situation where someone would be like, oh wow, a cheap LCD. I wonder if I can use it for anything other than what it's meant for. So we're gonna try. I was lucky to find the PDF actually for this LCD panel on the internet. So I actually know what all these pinouts are, so I have a chance. The first big trick is going to be soldering something to this. I mean, this is all made by a pick and place machine. Robots solder this, not humans. And then you just push it in place. But if you're gonna to try to hand solder, it's gonna be a lot more difficult. These things are not meant to be fixed or serviced. They're just thrown away, which makes it very hard to modify. It's not like an old video game system where everything was large. So the first thing to do is to hook up a bunch of wires so we can access this flat flex ribbon cable. I have no idea how long this will take. Before I hack this apart, I'm going to check these signals with the device running using this Agilent oscilloscope, just to make sure the data sheet is correct. And these random patterns you see here, those are the actual colors. If I move down the line, I should be able to find the horizontal and vertical. Oh, there's the dot clock, which is every pixel running at 12 megahertz. The horizontal sync should be near that. Uh, okay, 30 kilohertz, that's gonna be the horizontal sync. And right below that should be the vertical sync. That signal's not as steady, but oh, wait, there it is. All right, there's the vertical sync. It updates horizontally at 30 kilohertz, uh, vertically at, uh, not sure, probably, well, no, 30 kilohertz would be a double rate, so it probably updates 120 times a second vertically. And the dot clock is at 12 megahertz. So I know those pixels are correct. So now that I've got that locked down, I can actually separate the connector out and start wiring up my own connections. First, we need to remove the flat flex ribbon cable. I'm doing this by heating the pads and slowly tilting off the connector. I'm not using a hot air gun as that could damage the plastic of the connector.
The larger power connectors on the end are fairly easy to solder. We're using standard ribbon cable for those. Not all of the pins are used on this connector, so we need to mark the ones that are. It's kind of hard to keep track because there's so many of them and they're so small. We only want to solder wires onto what is required. The interconnections are more difficult. The wires are closer together and it's hard to heat up only one of them at a time. Sometimes you accidentally desolder things, but if you turn your soldering iron down too low, you won't have enough heat. Ugh. Resoldering this ZIF connector takes a long time. If I had a PCB breakout for it, I'd be much better off. It would still be a tricky proposition because we'd have to remove it in the first place. I then reconnect the ZIF connector to the original PCB to make sure my connections were correct. We should be able to see some sort of image coming off of the SD photo frame. When your project has a deadline, you need the right parts right away. Um, yes, I need to order a pie face for the Raspberry Pi. Immediate shipping. Yeah, it's not exactly what I had in mind, and also, it's not even Raspberry. There's an easier way to get all the electronic components, support, and services you need. Visit element14.com today. Whew, I finally got it wired. So here's what I did. I remove the flat flex ribbon connector, sometimes called a ZIF, zero insertion force socket. I removed it and I rewired it manually here. I did that so that we can plug the screen into it, but then we can plug the wires into a separate microcontroller. But to test it, I rewired the wires to the board that it came from to make sure that it still works. Now the reason it's green is because I only hooked up the green channel. It was very, very difficult wiring to these connectors, so I only wired the ones I absolutely had to, such as horizontal, vertical sync, and uh, dot clock. So it's monochromatic, but it is doing something. I have this LCD hooked up to a breadboard, and the breadboard is hooked up to the original picture frame circuit board, and I'm using the clock uh, horizontal and vertical sync off of that. It appears the LCD has to be pulsed at the full rate, otherwise it won't work, which means these microcontrollers aren't fast enough to do it. If I had an ARM or a FPGA or CPLD, I could probably do it, but that's beyond the scope of this project because we're talking about if it's easy or not. So an example I did rig up was I have this PIC32 pulsing the dot clock. And uh, right now you can see there's a bunch of lines on the display and we have slight synchro, not quite because this is running at a different rate than that. So it's, that's why it's scrolling a little bit. It's not at the same rate but we can make some adjustments. I'm gonna knock down the spacing to 150 microseconds. See what that does. It should make different shaped lines. All right.
right, we should get a different pattern here. Okay, so there we have thicker lines. So I should be able to make them thicker or thinner. I don't know if you can really see it on the screen, but it's not green and black. It's more of a green and a really dark green. That's because it's overlapping, creating kind of a pulse width modulation effect. Uh, let's try it at 75. And we have a loop going on the microcontroller, which basically goes high for a certain period, then it goes low for a certain period, and then it loops. However, the point where it loops actually, you know, jumping in a program creates a delay. So we have these delays offset to make up for this delay. It's not super precise, but we're, no, we're just doing an example of what it takes to get something on an LCD. And what it takes is too much work. Okay. All right, so we have even finer lines. There we go. Now notice how they're just horizontal lines, not subpixels. That shows that we just don't have enough speed with a marker controller in order to clock every pixel. We need a faster dedicated solution. It's about 12 megahertz. That's what I picked up on the scope for the pixels. So you need to update the pixels, you know, 12 million times a second. And we just can't do this. Uh, maybe if we were programming machine language, we might just barely be able to do it. But as is, it's kind of close. So it just goes to show you, you know, this screen is only really useful with the thing it came with. What it takes to reverse engineer it, hook it up to something else, it's not really worth it. I mean, I've spent like four hours on this and this is just as far as I've gotten. Now think about your time, like what your time is worth. You know, even if you make $5 an hour, which is impossible nowadays, let's say it was like the early 90s and you're making $5 an hour and you spend four hours on this, you've wasted $20 of your time. So your $5 screen is now a $25 screen that still doesn't work. Or you could buy a $25 screen off Amazon. Of course, you wouldn't be able to buy a $25 LCD back in the early 90s. But still, even if you're doing it as a project, you know, oh, I don't care if this is a waste of my time, I'm doing it for fun. The time you waste trying to get an old LCD to work, even if you don't put a monetary value on that time, that's that much time less you have to make the rest of the project cool. You know, so, not even if, yeah, so you, if you, you could waste a whole weekend on something like this, still get nowhere, or you could have just bought a $25 cheap little LCD. Now, I certainly understand why people would like to reuse and salvage things. I mean, I do the same thing. I pulled a bunch of parts out of my old laser printer because I knew some of them would be useful. But there just comes a time when it's really not worth it. You know, your old broken DVD portable player, some of those have external inputs. In that case, yes, it's worth it, but if it doesn't, just basically forget about it. Unless you really want to learn about how the LCD works, then it's great. But if your intention is to just obtain a working LCD screen, I mean, $25 off of amazon.com. Uh, granted, this was $5, but unless you can do it in under $20 worth of time, it's not worth it. Today's viewer question comes from Reggie who asks, would it be possible to use an Arduino to make a KVM switch, meaning a keyboard video mouse switcher where one set of controls can be used for multiple computers? I don't see why not. I'd probably use a USB enabled AVR in id mode, human interface device, and then have a bus switch to choose which computer's USB port it's being connected to. This would give you an electronically controlled disconnect. To recap our findings today, using an old LCD screen from a random device can be very dicey. When repurposing LCDs, you should look for the following. External inputs, such as the AV in on a portable DVD player, a common generic usage like a car backup camera or a rear DVD screen for the kids, and well-known parts like the LCD from a popular smartphone or gaming device. You should avoid the following. Cheap LCDs because you'll have a hard time finding the data sheets, and small devices because you'll probably won't be able to solder it by hand. The LCD we hacked today certainly hit that second point, and that's why I had trouble with it. Thanks for watching. In our next episode, we'll show you how to get started using CADSoft Eagle circuit board layout software. We'll see you then. Stay tuned at element14.com forward slash TBHS, where you can join the discussion, suggest builds for the show, and even have a chance to win upcoming builds. Remember, you can always email build ideas to benheck at element14.com. Thanks for watching.